All right, so in this module, we're gonna take a look at uh, an example relating to both coal work and annealing, and basically kind of a design problem based on that. So here's the setup, and here's the design criteria. So the idea is we have a brass rod. Um, its original diameter is 10 millimeters, and we want the final diameter to be 7.5 millimeters. So we know that coal work has to happen. Right? Coal work has to happen to, to change the shape of this to get it to the final diameter. And so we're going to do a uh, drawing of this rod to get to this diameter. And so here's where the design criteria comes in. We want, or, or sorry, the design is we need the tensile strength to be in excess of 380 megapascals, and we need the ductility to be at least 15%. And again, we need the final diameter to be 7.5 millimeters for this application. So the first step I want you to do is um, basically uh, looking at going from this to this, see what the consequences are of going to that final diameter. So just like we did in the previous example on uh, cold work, uh, you're gonna calculate the amount of cold work and then get the properties from that same uh, set of figures uh, and see what the consequences are. See what the tensile strength, see what the ductility would be if we go from 10 to 7.5 millimeters in diameter. So do that, um, pause this, go over to the quiz and answer that question, and then come back and we will look at that uh, consequence. All right. So let's take a look at this consequences for this drawing to the final diameter. And so the first step is we've got this reduction in diameter. So we need to calculate the percent cold work just like we did before. And so we can see here we have area over uh, original minus final over original. And we can rearrange that a bit to one minus the, the ratio. And then again, we have the, uh, these are circular cross sections. So we have pi d squared over four um, and the pi and the fours cancel out here. And so we just get the d final squared over d original squared uh, and subtracting that from one. And so we get one minus uh, five point, sorry, 7.5 over 10 squared. And so if you plug all of those numbers in then we get that the cold work is 43.8%. All right, so like I said before, you're gonna go back to this, uh, these plots of tensile strength and ductility that we showed before. Uh, this is in your textbook as well. So um, here we're looking at brass and we're looking at 43.8%. So we're talking about somewhere around here. And so if I go up to that, we see that for brass, the tensile strength is going to be 540. And let me go back real quick to show you that our design criteria was 380. It has to ex exceed 380. We've done that. Great. We've had 540. All right. Let's look at the second part. So ductility, same thing, 43.8. We're somewhere down here. And so if we look at this curve and go over, it's around 6%. So 6%. Sorry about that. 6% is less than that 15% that we were after. And so in this case, if we draw down the diameter of this rod from 10 to 7.5 directly, um, we do not meet the design criteria, right? We, we have a good tensile strength, but our ductility is too low. And so basically at this point, we need to think about what are our, our other options. And that brings us to the next question. So how can we draw the brass rod to the final diameter? Because that was part of our design. It has to be that diameter, but also meet all of the safety criteria, tensile strength and ductility. So now think about a revised methodology where we could meet all of those design criteria. So again, pause the video, uh, see what you can work out, and then come back and we'll work this one out together. All right, so you're back. Hopefully you've had a chance to answer this. And what we're gonna do here is go to the graphs. So for our design criteria, we know that we have to be above 380. So I'm gonna find 380 on the curves. 
so here for brass. So it looks like around 12% here. And then if I look at, uh, so anything over 12% will give us 380, right? Anything over here will give us higher than 380. So now if we go to elongation and we look at 15%, um, uh, so we're over here, 15%, and we look at it, this for brass, which is up here, we'll see that 15%, uh, The sorry, I had it a little wrong here. So 15%, the ductility is over here. So this is 27% uh, cold work. And so if we want 15% ductility or higher, then we would have to be have to be below this 27 number. Sorry. So this gives us a range, a workable range. So we need to be uh, between 12 and 27% cold work in order to match the design criteria. So that's that's the first piece. So here's our strategy then. So we're going to cold work the material. Um, and really this first cold work um, is to get it to some stage. So we'll talk about that. So basically the, the overall strategy is going to be we're going to cold work, but then we're going to anneal. And so with that annealing, we're going to say that we're going back to the original properties. So we start back over on that curve. And then we cold work again, because again, we're trying to get to where the final draw that we do is going to be within this range. And so here, if we just kind of arbitrarily pick 20, because it's between these two numbers, as our second draw condition, we can come up with what the um, intermediate diameter should be. So that's what we're going to do here. So if we want to calculate the intermediate diameter, then what we're going to do is look at the, uh, the final and the original using the, the cold work condition. So this is the, you know, and, and we've, again, eliminated the pi and the four that you saw before. And we uh, are, are basically at this point going to solve for the diameter. So if we solve for the original diameter now, knowing that we have to have a final diameter of 7.5, we can solve for this and we're going to pick 20% here. So this is the final, uh, the cold work calculation for the final cold work uh, final draw that we have. And so what we see is that if we solve for this, that um, putting in 7.5 for the final in this case, and getting our intermediate um, with the 20% cold work, we're going to see that our intermediate diameter is 8.39. So it, as long as you pick a uh, cold work in between these values, then uh, you'll get a number that, that works out. So in this case, we're picking 8.39 uh, 8 as our intermediate. So what that means then is that stage one is going to be a cold work to reduce the diameter from 10 to 8.39. Then we're going to heat treat it, allow that recrystallization to occur, and we're going to get a new set of grains. And so we go back to 0% cold work. And so at this point, we start over with the 8.39, and then we want to go to 7.5, and that's the calculation that we already made. So we know that's going to give us 20%. And so from this, that's 20%, and we get um, 340 megapascals for the uh, tensile uh, yield strength. We get 400, which is above our 380, and 24, which is above the 15. So we've satisfied by doing a two-stage with heat treating in between. So that's just uh, a possible way that we're going to have to deal with uh, design criteria that would have to balance both strength and ductility. You might have to incorporate a heat treatment to do this. And this also gets you thinking about why uh, hot rolling might be necessary, because hot rolling is at these elevated temperatures and doesn't allow these, um, the strain energy to stay in the material. And so we don't get the strain hardening effect with hot rolling. And so it's a way where we can roll more without having to heat treat in between in order to maintain the properties of the material without cold working it. That's what the hot working um, process does for us.